I live on and manage a small farm in County Antrim and a few months ago I came outside to find instead of three geese that I had two geese and where the gander used to be there was a puff of white feathers. A thief had come in the night, fantastic Mr Fox had visited our farm and spirited away one of our geese despite the precautions that we had in place. And that's a story that has been happening throughout human history. People, livestock, carnivores, carnivores eating livestock, people understandably getting upset. But apart from foxes and a few other small predators, it's not something that we've thought much about in Ireland over the last 250 years. But it is something that I've spent a lot of time thinking and researching about. I've worked on farms in Canada that have lost sheep to coyotes. I've talked to hundreds of people in the Himalayas who live alongside wolves and snow leopards and lose livestock to both. But in Ireland, we've forgotten what it's like to live with animals like this. We drove wolves and lynx and bears to extinction hundreds and thousands of years ago. These are powerful animals that evoke powerful emotions. But many people across Europe and the world are calling for the reintroduction of these species as part of rewilding landscapes. And so today, we're going to take a look at the case for and against reintroducing wolves and lynxes and bears to the island of Ireland. We're gonna look at the issue of could we practically do that in the 21st century? Should we do that in the 21st century, exploring the ethical, social and political, financial and ecological cases for and against? But first, we need to travel back in time and explore how our ancestors lived alongside these animals in the past and not so distant past. We're back in the Mesolithic or Middle Stone Age, almost 9,000 years ago. And it's from this era that we've the only piece of evidence of lynx having existed on the island of Ireland. From a single femur bone in a cave in County Waterford comes the only evidence that lynx lived alongside people on this island in our historical past. It's possible, given that lynx existed in Britain until only 1300 years ago, that lynx did live for a lot longer on this island, but we can't say for sure because we just don't have the evidence. Lynx biologically are a medium-sized predator. They're about the size of a springer spaniel. They catch medium-sized prey like roe deer and occupy medium-sized habitats. And it's fairly easy for lynx to unobtrusively live alongside people. Long before it was a deodorant, and why they ever called it lynx, because I've worked with lynx in captivity and they're not particularly pleasant smelling animals. Lynx roamed this island with their ancestors, but no more. To find out more about the next species, the bear that we coexisted with, we have to go back to the future. We're back about 3,000 years ago in the Bronze Age, and this is when brown bears went extinct on the island of Ireland. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer to this one. Brown bears are obviously a very large animal. I wouldn't like to be standing this close to a wild one. Nevertheless, they're actually more omnivorous than carnivorous. They spend a lot of time eating roots and berries, scavenging, fishing. And so they're not as wild animals, and certainly people are not such a big part of their diet as other hunting species. Brown bears occupy medium-sized territories despite being such large animals. And what's really interesting is that the evidence from the past when people coexisted with bears, especially in the likes of counties Leitrim and Clare, is that some of those bear bones actually have butchery marks, meaning that it wasn't people on the bear's menu, it was bears on the people's menu. This was the original bear snack long before it was a healthy fruit treat for kids. It was people and their hunting that drove bears to extinction on the island of Ireland 3,000 years ago. And now let's find out what happened to that last big predator 
the wolf. We're back in the middle of the 18th century. It's actually only about 250 years since the last wolf was hunted to extinction on the island of Ireland. And various counties actually compete to lay claim to being the location of the last Irish wolf, including Carlow, Kerry, Derry, and just up the road from me in County Antrim. Wolves like this one are fairly large pack hunters that occupy large amounts of space and hunt large prey. That means, paradoxically, despite there being the most evidence of them coexisting alongside people on the island of Ireland over historical time, that in fact, compared to say the lynx, they're the least suitable for reintroduction. And now having taken our brief natural history tour back through time, it's time to go back to the future. Having journeyed back in time to look at how we coexisted with wolves and lynxes and bears in the past on the island of Ireland, it's now time to ask, could we coexist with them again in the 21st century? And to unpack that further, there are two different things that we need to consider in terms of looking at the practicalities. The second is looking at the human nature bit and how we could engage people in that process. But that's the tricky bit. We need to begin by first looking at the nature bit. And what that would entail is really some ecological modeling of the island of Ireland to find suitable places where there is sufficient habitat and sufficient food for potentially wolves, lynxes, or bears to be reintroduced to the island. It would be a mapping process. Ideally, we'd also be looking at livestock populations in those areas, some livestock such as sheep being much more vulnerable to predation than larger livestock such as cattle. And that would really, that would be the first step, it would be the natural science foundation on which to build any potential reintroduction. But the nature bit of bringing back wolves and lynxes and bears is the easy bit. The tricky bit is the human nature. There is a precedent for reintroducing predatory species to Ireland with successful reintroductions of red kites to down, golden eagles to Donegal, and sea eagles to Kerry. But potentially reintroducing wolves and lynxes and bears is a different matter because these are powerful predators that can damage human livelihoods, predate on livestock, and although very rarely, occasionally injure people. So as well as those natural science tools that give us the basis for considering any potential reintroductions, we need a whole suite of social science tools that allow us firstly to quantify and assess public support for this, including the influence and opinion of key stakeholders who are most likely to be negatively impacted by any such project, farmers, landowners, and also policymakers. As well as gauging that, there are a number of different tools that can be used to promote coexistence between people and predators, tools that are successfully used right across the world and right across Europe. And these fall into four distinct categories. The first is practical tools that disrupt the predation sequence of a carnivore, things like fencing, guards for the necks of livestock, the use of guard dogs, all of these try to prevent or minimize any predation on livestock. The second tool is financial, things like insurance and compensation so that livestock owners are no financially worse off because of any potential damage or injury to their livestock. The third takes more of a holistic rural development approach using things like ecotourism, such as wolf tours in Holland now, that provide financial benefits and an incentive to have carnivores on your land through promoting ecotourism, uh, rural enterprise. And lastly, of course, there's always the option of culling that sometimes is considered whenever none of those other tools work. So altogether, these natural science tools as well as these social science tools would be essential for us to successfully ask and answer the question, could we reintroduce wolves and lynxes and bears to the island of Ireland in the 21st century?
1995, wolves were reintroduced to Yellowstone National Park in the United States for the first time since the 1930s. And over the decades since, there's been a profound ecological transformation of the park because the wolves have been introduced. As, wolf, as elk and deer populations have decreased, plant populations have improved, there's been more tree growth, and that has had a knock-on beneficial effect for lots of wildlife, including bears, beavers, and birds. The science of that is based on something called trophic cascades. And it works a little bit like this. Trophic cascades works in that keystone predators at the very top of the food chain have profound ecological implications and effects on all the different levels of the food chain beneath them, on prey animals and on plants. And those ripple effects cascade down through the different levels of the web of life and the food chain. So the question for potentially reintroducing wolves and lynxes and bears to the island of Ireland is, is this science of trophic cascades relevant and useful? Is there an ecological case for bringing these species back? And that depends largely on the nature of landscapes that they were reintroduced to. In many parts of Ireland, livestock function as wild herbivores do controlling plants. But if a landscape is rewilded and you take the livestock out, then you need wild herbivores like deer to control the plant species. And if you reintroduce wild herbivore species or they naturally come back, then you need to control those, either by using culling by people or using carnivores, nature's premium hunters. On the other hand, if there aren't enough prey species, carnivore species will predate and attack livestock. So the ecological case really depends on what sort of vision we have for the Irish countryside. Is it a rewilded one where we need and there is a role for these predators to keep the balance? Or would we reintroducing them actually cause ecological problems as well as other sorts of problems? When I was a child, I was terrified of Beauty and the Beast. Not primarily because the beast was, is terrifying, but because of the wolves. The scenes with the wolves I found terrifying and I found them to be really, really scary. And yet what I was seeing in the movie was at odds with what I was starting to learn from watching documentaries and reading books and encyclopedias, that wolves, like other carnivores, are not inherently evil, nor are they inherently good. They just are. And that really introduces us to another dimension of the rewilding debate in Ireland about whether we should bring back wolves and lynxes and bears. And it's the ethical and moral complexities, the case for and the case against. And whether we ascribe to carnivores, as we often have throughout history, agency, often that they are evil or vile or vicious when they're not, is one of the components of that debate. The other aspect is looking back in hindsight and asking was it morally wrong for our ancestors to exterminate these species and therefore is the onus on us? Is it morally right for us, their descendants, to bring them back to right that wrong of history? And we're going to have a wide, wide range of different opinions on that. The third ethical and moral dimension to this debate on the island of Ireland is the role of people. And this is, goes much beyond this island and is something we need to consider globally is what is the place of human beings, homo sapiens, in the world around us? Are we part of nature or are we apart from it? Are we an aberration on a world that was pristine before there were people and since we've come along we've wrecked it? exterminating lynx and wolves and bears just being one of the many mistakes? Or have we simply, like all other animal species throughout our evolutionary past, adapted the world to our needs and on this island gotten rid of lynx and wolves and bears because they competed with us for land and livestock? I'm not sure that there's a right answer or a wrong answer to any of these questions. It's going to depend very much on your point of view, but it's important to consider this in this debate that there's an ethical and moral case against, there's an ethical and moral case for, 
and there's a lot of gray areas in between. Between 2002 and 2014, the population of the Iberian lynx, a close cousin of the Eurasian lynx, increased from just under 100 individuals in the wild to just over 300 individuals in the wild because of an extensive conservation program mostly funded by the EU Life Programme. To do that cost 100 million euros. It's about 500,000 euros per lynx. It's quite a lot of money, but on the other hand, what price do you put on a magnificent species brought back from the brink of extinction? Your answer to that question is going to depend on your point of view, but the point is reintroductions cost a lot of money. The Iberian lynx one cost even more money because it involved quite a lot of captive breeding, which is more expensive than regular reintroductions using already wild animals. Nevertheless, it's a significant financial investment. The closest figures to what it might cost in Ireland to bring back lynx or wolves or bears come from a study done about the potential for a trial reintroduction of lynx in the UK. And the organisation involved did a cost benefit analysis, some of whose figures may be in the rough ballpark for doing so in Ireland. They estimated that there would, it would cost 19,000 a year in terms of paying farmers back in compensation for injured or lost livestock. They estimated 1.5 million to monitor and carry out the project. Those are the costs in terms of the benefits. They estimated 3.3 million in terms of savings with controlling deer, both from damage to forestry operations and damage to farmers' crops. And they estimated 67 million in terms of benefits from tourism that any reintroduction trial would lead to. Altogether, we can see that reintroducing carnivores is expensive, but there are also financial benefits as well as costs. And like anything in life, that means weighing up the costs. What costs bringing back a species from the verge of extinction? What price restoring animals that were once extinct to this island? On the other hand, perhaps that money would be better spent on our existing native species, our farmland birds, which have seen <laughs> declines over the last 50 or 60 years are wildlife in the sea, so often so out of, out of sight and out of mind. And so in the case, in the financial case, for potentially reintroducing lynx and wolves and bears to the island of Ireland, we have to weigh up the costs and we have to ask this question, would spending all that money on bringing these animals back to this island, is it money well spent? Or is it going to break the piggy bank? In 2019, something happened in the eastern part of the Netherlands, which hadn't happened for almost 200 years. The first wild wolf pups were born in Holland. Wolves gradually returning to Holland, which they have over the last number of years, compared with reintroducing them and other species to Ireland, is that wolves are literally walking across the border from Germany into eastern Holland. And that means, technically, it's not a reintroduction. It's a recolonization. The animals are bringing themselves back, albeit with some help from Dutch conservationists. But that's the critical aspect of lynxes and wolves and bears being considered for reintroduction to the island of Ireland. They're not going to jump the English Channel or swim the Irish Sea. The only way that they can come back to this island is by people bringing them back. And that means that the entire project is both social and it's also political. It's social because it would involve a whole range of different people for and against stakeholders, those who were keen on the idea, those who were opposed to the idea, those who were, like myself, a foot in both camps or somewhere in the middle sitting on the fence. It's also a political project, not in the party political sense or the political philosophy political sense, but 
political in the sense that animals move freely across borders. And if you had links on the border with the Republic that cross into the north and vice versa, it raises the question of are the Irish links, British links, whatever human activity people turn their hands to, inevitably it becomes politicized because, well, that's human nature. But in Ireland, with our history of conflict, we'd have to be especially careful that we didn't politicize any potential reintroduction. Like everything in life, and the idea of reintroducing wolves and lynxes and bears, there's a social and political case for, and there's a social political case against. In wolves and lynxes and bears, oh my, the case for and against reintroducing large predators to Ireland. We've looked at various aspects of the debate. We first looked at the past and how we coexisted with these species previously in time. We've looked at, could we coexist with them in the present? The practicalities, both in terms of social aspects and ecological aspects. And then we looked at the critical question of should we coexist with them in the future, in the 21st century, looking at the ecological, the ethical, the financial, and the so social and political cases, both for and against. And what we're seeing that it's quite a complex issue. It, there may not be a right or wrong answer, and your opinion or opinions are going to vary widely, depending on your background. But it's also worth remembering at the end of our talk, that when it comes to coexisting with wildlife in general, and wolves and lynxes and bears specifically, that it is by no means these animals that are the world's most dangerous creatures. In fact, the world's most dangerous creature is quite a bit smaller than that adult brown bear that I was standing next to earlier. And I actually have and keep at home some of what many would consider to be the world's most dangerous creature. And I've actually brought one with me today just to illustrate this point and keep it in mind and keep it foremost in the debate. And I'm just gonna bring it out now. Um, they're a little bit feisty, but this one should be okay. So here we go. This is, if it come out and play ball, the world's most dangerous creature. And it's a mirror because the world's most dangerous creature is you, the person sitting next to you. It's me, the people around me. It's all of us. By far and away, we are the world's most dangerous creature. And in the debate about how we relate to the world around us, whether that's wolves and lynxes and bears or any other species and our impact and engagement with the natural world, we should always keep that in mind. And we have also seen that from Irish history and our ability to coexist with each other ourselves over the last period of time on this island. So really in looking at the issue of wolves and lynxes and bears, the case for and the case against reintroducing these species to the island of Ireland, the real challenge is not wolves and lynxes and bears, but you and me and us. The real challenge is not Ursus Arctus, Canis Lupus, and Lynx Lynx, but it's Homo sapiens. The real challenge in any debate about potentially reintroducing these species to Ireland is not rewilding the landscape of Ireland. The real challenge is rewilding ourselves. <laughs>